What's going on, family and friends? It's your big homie, T.C. Storm Caldwell, B.K.A. Stormy Weather. So you are right here with the beast from the east, baby. And I'm rolling with my three kings out west on that Vegas strip. Y'all know who it is. D.C., Don DaCosta, King K.C. Cousin, and the man with the plan, making it all happen, King K-9 the Great. Right here on Moving Radio. Radio.com and Moving Radio TV. We're bringing you another episode of Inside the Music, the Truth About the Truth, where we are here. This episode with our guest, Robert Dickerson, the manager of the original Philadelphia group, the Ebony's, right here on MoveRadio.com. Stay tuned. Welcome, 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 y'all. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Music, the Truth About the Truth, right here on MovingRadio.com. You can catch us on Moving Radio TV on all streaming platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, we're doing it for Philly. We're doing it for Philly, so you know I'm feeling good doing it for the hometown, doing it for the home base, but we definitely can't take anything away from the rest of the, the, rest of the country that's been giving us such good musical guests, musical legends, management, talent, recruiting, Writers, producers, listen, we got another one for y'all this week. We are here this week with the original manager of the original members of a Philadelphia-based group based out of Philadelphia. You know how we do it over here. You know what I'm saying? They got a lot of talent right here in Philly. This gentleman was the original manager. He also, over the course of the time of his life, opened up a world-famous uh, martial arts school in Camden, New Jersey. He is also um, still carrying the torch even after one of the original members of the group has passed away. You know, Lord rest the dead. So, you know, we got our original members, um, James Tootin, who is with the Lord right now, rest in peace. David Beasley, also known as Bees, um, and as well as Jennifer Holmes Rossi. Listen, it's, it's nothing but talent going on. But ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, I'm going to bring it to you because we kind of won short this week, y'all. Uh, sorry about that. We won short this episode. King KC had a gig that he had to tend to. So unfortunately, he won't be here for this episode, but he'll be back with us soon. So King Don, you know what it is. Take it away, baby. TC, thanks for the introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest today. Uh, we have Mr. Robert Dickerson, Philadelphia well-known person who is the manager of the original and real Ebony's. So uh, right now, uh, as you see uh, Mr. Robert there uh, looking at us, what's up, Rob? How you doing? Hey, Don, how you doing, man? It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, you know, inviting us on your show. It's an honor and a pleasure. Well, brother, it's an honor and a pleasure to talk to you, somebody who is uh, the manager of such an illustrious group as the Ebony's. Uh, and as people can see, if they can't, right behind Rob, there's a big poster. <laughs> and if you look, you'll see pictures of the Ebony's on there including members up there on there. So uh, he's, he's, he's backing, you know, he, he's back in his group and he's got them set. So we're going to get into this right now. Uh, tell us, Rob, how you got to be the manager of such a illustrious group of guys and ladies. And ladies, yeah, well, you know, Don, it happened 
about 13 years ago, um, this friend of mine, we was uh, doing shows on the waterfront in Camden, New Jersey, because the Ebony's are originally from Camden, New Jersey. And like uh, Leon Huff was the one that found the Ebony's, Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff is a fellow of international records. And um, so make a long story short, this friend of mine had me doing all the paperwork. And that's how I got a chance to know uh, that the Ebony's was still out there performing because I only knew the original Ebony's, but this group that was uh, performing as the sanctioned Ebony's uh, was actually how I got into it. This friend of ours named Michael McIntosh, a wonderful fella. You know, he he loved Dave Beasley. He loved the Ebony's. And he wanted to keep their legacy alive, you know. And then uh, because I was, I have my own organization called the Unity Community Center. It's an organization that my wife and I started back in 1983 in Camden, New Jersey. Because we met in Philadelphia. I got to say this real quick, Don. Like my wife and I met in Philadelphia at our karate school in North Philly in 1973. That was 50 years ago, going on 50 years. And we got married going on 49 years now. And then when we, uh, my karate instructor said, man, you got to start something up in uh, Camden. And that's how we ended up in, you know, Camden, New Jersey. And we've been running our own organization. We have a world famous karate school. We have also a world famous African dance and drum ensemble called the Universal African Dance and Drum Ensemble. And uh, so they saw that I was running this organization for a long time. Uh, it'd be 40 years as of February the 1st, we've been running our own organization. So that's when they wanted me to help run the Ebony's, you know, uh, keep the Ebony's legacy alive. And that's how I got into it, you know, and it's, it's a great pleasure. Thanks to Michael McIntosh and Dave Beasley, who is the original founding member and creator of the Ebony's. Yeah, them two wanted me to manage the group. Yeah, I hope I answered it in a short time. Uh, listen, brother, you've <laughs> done a wonderful job. Uh, not just uh, in this interview uh, that we just got into, but you've done a great job with the Ebony's. The funny thing is, you and I talked about this. Uh, a lot of people, when you say, uh, talk about the Ebony's and stuff, they say, I don't remember them. Uh, That's Ebony's, right. Ebony's, uh, I can't. Uh, and like I told you, uh, when that happens, because even I said that, I said, can't remember what music the Ebony's did. I remember the name. And and then you say, well, hey, I, I'll, let me send you the material on them. And you sent over the material and then you send over a MP3, a track of their music. Right, right. And the minute you put that on, you go, oh, hell, I know who they are. You know, and then you start to go back and recall uh, who was I dating at that time? <laughs> uh, where did I first hear this song? You know, right, right. Uh, so everybody that said that to me, I I, I don't remember them. Uh, I, I played the song and they go, oh, wait a minute. That's them. Oh, you, that's who you have on. That's my jam. I remember. Uh -huh. Yes, we all do. You know, oh, thank uh, you. and, and it, it's funny that you don't remember the group, but you don't show sure remember their music. You remember their songs. You know what, Don? I always tell people every time I do an interview, uh, when I met my wife, man, uh, think about this song. Think about the words that Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff wrote, and Tom Bell ranged a lot of their music. Uh, just because of you, you're the reason why I'm a happy guy. And that next record, hit record was, it's forever. I'm going to love you forever. Yep. And those are just two of their great songs. Let me tell you something, man. There's 16 songs I play, and there's more than, way more than 16 that are off the chain, man. Don, they awesome, awesome music, man. You know, I Believe, which is more like a gospel type of tune that the Ebony's did, is awesome, you know. 
And they said that Booty and, you know, the lead baritone singer, a lot of people, like, they got their style from the Dells, you know, that switched back and forth with, you know, with, uh, you know, Marvin and, uh, you know, that back and forth style. So the Ebony's got a lot of that, but a lot of people don't know this. Even, see, the Ebony's was uh, Philadelphia International Records' first national hit group in 1971. Even though Kenny and Leon had the intruders way before that, but when they formed their own Philadelphia International company. Records company, yeah. the Emmys was their first national hit. And that record was You're the Reason Why. And that's the Ebony's historical mark out of all. And then came How Melvin and Blue Notes, the OJs, they came right after the Ebony's in 1971. But the Ebony started it all for Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff. And uh, and of course, the great brother uh, Tom Bell. Great yeah, who just passed away. Yeah, he was a genius. Tom Bell, the Spinners, the Stylistics, the Delphonics. Tom Bell was just awesome. But them three Philadelphia geniuses. I'm telling you, brother. When they say off the chain, the music they wrote is music that will live forever. And that's why I'm like I'm an African American historian. And and I also preserve history of especially R and B, a little bit of jazz. I have two sons who are jazz artists, and also African music, you know, and also reggae. But I'm a real lover of R and B. I love R and B. And uh, well, the thing awesome. I was thing I was impressed with, uh, first of all, uh, Kenny wrote a lot of songs. Yes. Okay, and they were iconic songs, but the person I loved the most was Tom Bell. Oh, yes, yes, and I love Tom Bell because his arrangements that he did on music, and he had one thing that me and my other writing partner, mm -hmm. uh, Rick uh, Ferguson, the one thing that the two of us love are violins. Wow, yeah, and Tom Bell loved and that. Tom Bell could take and do a, an arrangement with violins that you would just sit back and listen to and go, damn, that's <laughs> nice. And, yes. if it, and if somebody said, that's music out of Philly, you automatically said violins, and that's Tom Bell. Tom Bell, yeah. The, the arrangement was just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the arrangement, yes. He was spectacular in his arrangements. And like I said, uh, a lot of people, when I mentioned, well, if you do an arrangement, you should use violins. And a lot of people go, come on, man. You know, <laughs> violins. But like I tell them, uh, people's most iconic music, uh, their best known music is always with violins. Mm. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And, yeah. and, and I went into a thing because I had a couple of saxophone players on. And we got into discussing certain artists. Uh, Cannonball Adley. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Charlie Bird Parker. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, yes. Clifford Brown. Yes. And I said, their most iconic albums are Charlie Bird and Strengths. Mm. Cannonball Adley and Strengths. And I, I tell you the truth. Uh, I have all of that stuff here, the original. Right, 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 yes. And I've gone and I'm on a lot of jazz sites on uh, Facebook. And I've sent over tracks of these artists with those strings in it. And people said, how did you get this? Where did you? And I said, I, I have it. It's personal. Uh, I have the originals. I said, but if you go on YouTube, you can bring up that music. It's right. there. It's there and it's there to listen to. And not one person has ever played that and said, well, it sounds dated. Ain't nothing with violin sound dated. That's right. It's this beautiful sound. Yeah. It just adds to everything. It brings out uh, and critiques a lot of things that you may not notice in something without violence. You definitely notice it with it. That's that tranquility, that peace, that uh, that spirit that comes through that. 
Yeah. That was so dynamic of the Philadelphia sound. You know, the Philadelphia sound was dynamic because of them three guys, Kenny, Leon, and Tom. You know, that sound is just... And we have an interesting guy who's our musical director today. His name is Alfie Pollitt. Uh, Alfie, Alfie Pollitt. And, and he toured with Teddy Pendergrass over seven years before Teddy got in his accident. And uh, him and Tom Bell were friends and Kenny Gamble, Leon, all them. And then he's our musical director. He's our piano player. Okay. And, and then, then he could hear that, you know, that that beautiful arrangement of Tom Bell and all of the Ebony's music. It's just that once you play the Ebony's music, you would think it was a new song because there's a lot of songs that never got a chance to chart. And I asked Kenny, well, what happened, Kenny? I, I said, Kenny, what happened to the Ebony? So they had a short run. But what happened to, like, this record called I'll Try? Because, like, 50 years ago, I was to play that record so much, I just wore that album out, right? And, and then Kenny said, Rob, I should have made it a single. But I put it on the album, and it got lost. But that record, I'll try, man, Booty used to tear up the stage. Him and Beasley, Jenny, and Jingles, they would, man, they would tear up the stage. The women would go crazy over that record. Yeah. You know, and uh, but Kenny told me, should have made it a single. But at that time, albums was coming out strong. But when they were singles, it sold better at that back in those days, you know. Well, if he had done it as a single... He yeah. might have had a, he might have had another problem, cause you're you're in the same area age as I. <laughs> you know for a fact, record companies put out a record that they like that they call side A that they it's wanted all the DJs yeah, yeah, yeah. to play, and the right. DJ for some reason would take and flip it over and play the B side, and the B <laughs> side wound up being a bigger hit than the A side. A side. <laughs> yeah, you got that right, Don. Yes. So, I mean, you know, maybe that, I'm just saying maybe that's what Kenny should have done. He should have put it out as as a, a single and made right. it a B-side. And he'd have had uh, big hits with A and B. A and B, that record. And, you know, when they perform it, even today, the group that we have today, you know, over the last 13 and a half years, we had a lot of individuals come in and out. Like me and you were discussing because of the people still on the Ebony's name and legacy caused a lot of problems, caused problems with booking agencies. So a lot of members will move in and out. Said so like a lot of members will move in and out the group. Like I have four awesome people as of now, you know, we doing a big R and B day show in honor of, of, of women's history month, March the 4th, uh, next month coming up in Philadelphia at the Clarion Airport at the hotel in Philadelphia, we're going to be doing a beautiful show at the Philadelphia Sound. And it's going to be a beautiful moment for us there. Yeah. I saw the uh, the post that you had for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I saw the post for that. Uh, I, I put it up on, on my pages so uh, oh, people wow. can okay. see it, you know. Yeah, yeah, you uh, but, know Patty Jackson of WDAS, right? Patty yeah. Jackson. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's our honoree for that day. Okay. And she's going to host a little bit because she has her WDS show right after that. But uh, we're really blessed for this event, you know. Well, I know it'll be a great event. Uh, but right now, we're going to take a break and uh -huh. let our sponsors – uh, advertise their products and their skills to uh, our listeners. So, everybody, we'll be right back. Uh, TC, take us out of here and go to the break. Now, that was some good information to have right there. Listen, we appreciate you dropping that jewel. We're going to take a little break right here. Pay a couple of bills. You know, we got to do that in order for us to keep doing what we're doing so we can get back to that point when we come back right here from this break on this album music, The Truth About the Truth. With our special guest, Robert Dickerson, right here on MoveRadio.com. Hey, you. Yeah, yeah, you. What are you doing? What are you doing right now? Sitting on the couch, playing a video game. 
Are you an independent artist? What are you doing right now? Are you pushing your music? Hustling? Grinding? As far as it can possibly push? What are you doing right now? Doing a bunch of shit? That ain't got nothing to do with pushing your music. What does it take for you to get off your ass? Get up off your ass. And do something real simple. Now send your music in right now. Get up off your ass, man. At Move em Radio, it's as simple as that. Come on! What you doing? It's just as simple as that. Move them right here. You send them. Send it in. We move them. That's all you gotta do. Huh? Send it right now. You send them. We move them. Let's go. My body's very... In a world where the system don't exist unless it's controlled On a level like Gage, Trump, Rockefeller, homie, don't you know I'm talking private class jets, won't settle for less Most of all, this y'all the first time to hear, raise your hand That's what I'm talking about, y'all, enjoy yourself What I like to say, you see that young man on the wall with that old man on the wall right there That's the son of me and Mr. Al Green He goes like this And welcome back to Inside the Music, the truth about the truth, where we are going to pick up with that conversation about that timeless music and that pretty much a short career that was had by the Ebony's at that time during the Sound of Philadelphia with Philly International Music. Let's get back to it with Robert Dickinson right here, Inside the Music, the King DC Don. Let's go. So before we took a break, uh, we were getting some very valuable information uh, from Mr. Robert Dickerson yes, uh, of Philadelphia, manager of the illustrious Ebony's. Uh, and one thing I, I got to break into because it was true and was something you alluded to, which was a lot of the songs that the Ebony's did were songs that were used for weddings, uh, engagement parties, right. uh, things that took place after the wedding, first dance for the bride and uh, mm -hmm. her husband and stuff. Uh, and as you alluded to, you use one of those songs for your wedding. Yeah, two of them. Three of them, really. Three of the songs. Yeah. What were they? You're the reason why. I'll try. And it's forever. Yeah, those are the three we used for our wedding. And that was 49 years ago, Don. And I, and those words, just because of you, you're the reason why I'm a happy guy. It's a powerful record. Oh, I, I listen, I know it, I know it is because, like I said, every time when I tell somebody about the Ebony's and they tell me, uh, I don't remember the Ebony's. Uh, you take and play. You're the reason why, and that's order automatically stuff comes. I I remember that song. They start alluding to. Uh, I remember what I was doing, who I was dating, and and it's <laughs> hilarious to me because yeah. that's the one thing about music. Uh, to me, music always has uh, a date. Uh, attached to it. Uh, it has an event, a relationship. There are just so many things that are attached to a song. Uh, and it was funny because when I had my little brother on here, Rick Ferguson, and we were saying, what song are we going to play? And I, I automatically said to Rick, oh, we're we going to play that baby making song. <laughs> and, and he said to me, baby making song. Right. I said, hey, you go to the whispers. Don't be late for love. I don't had a whole lot of people say uh -huh. they done made babies to that song. That's right. That's right. 
I said, so that's why I call it the baby making song. Right, and it's right. the same thing with the Ebony's. Uh, and I, I know this for a fact. Uh -huh. There were a lot of kids made to that song. Yes, You're the are. reason. You're the reason You're why. The reason, exactly. <laughs> and we know what the reason why was because <laughs> it showed up nine months late. That's right. So, absolutely. That that is definitely a song that uh, has stood the test of time, and uh, that was one of the things you said to me. You said, "You know, the Ebony's career wasn't that long," and I said, "Well, you know why their career may not have been that long? Mm -hmm. Their music has been forever, forever." Of course. Like I said, you take and play any one of those songs. And like you said, there's a lot of them because I did go through uh, the history of their music uh, and listen to a lot of the songs uh, just to re-familiarize myself with a lot of the stuff they did. Like, wow. like you said, uh, forever. And I tried. The bottom line was there was there's so much more music yeah. uh, in and and. Not just music. I'm talking about good music. Good music. Determination. I believe. Life in the country. I mean, do you like the way I love you? Sexy ways. Oh, I could go on and love of our own. That was made famous by the uh, average white band. Yep. You go on. But that's on the Ebony's. That's on our second album. But David Beasley, he kept his group together for over 50 years. Yeah, he kept his he kept his legacy alive. And that's what that was an idea. accomplishment in itself. The in fact itself. that he kept the group together that long, that's an accomplishment in yeah. itself. Because one of the hardest things there is in this business is to have a group or a band and keep it together. Together, that's correct. I mean, it is one yeah. of the reasons I'm impressed with groups like the Whispers, the OJs. Right, right. Their members have always been right family. They call members of their groups family, and they treat them that way. That's right. You know, usually there's always a problem in a group. Somebody always wants to be a solo artist mm. and go out on their own uh, to think that they can accomplish more. Right. And actually, they, they can do with the group. And what a lot of them don't understand is they are extremely popular. Right, because right. of what they do with the group. There's been a lot of artists that have left groups mm -hmm. that they were with. And uh, basically what happened is, as a solo artist, they just didn't have the same appeal they had with the same group. Appeal. That's correct. Yeah. But it's difficult to try to tell them. Plus the fact, you know, one of the other things with a group, uh, when an artist... Uh, feels they want to go out and and be a solo artist. Uh, a lot of people are in their in their head. Right. You know why do you want to be part of the group? Uh, there, there's five of you all together, and there's four guys behind you that are getting your paycheck because that money's yours. The people are interested in you, not the group. Well, you know, you know, you know, back in the early seventies, when the Temptations lost Eddie Kendricks. Uh, they loved David Beasley's voice at the Ebony. They begged Dave to come and take Eddie's spot. But Eddie, I mean, but Dave, he was thinking about it, but he said he just couldn't leave his group to Ebony's. But just think about it, he would have been a temptation because Dave Beasley's voice, that falsetto, that that high tenor, that first tenor falsetto, I'm telling you, Don, I've been dealing with the group for a long time myself. That is one hard act to get. I mean, when we try to get that voice, it's very, very difficult to get Dave Beasley's voice. His voice is so pure. And, you know, and Otis of the Temptations, man, they loved his voice. But he stayed with his Ebony's. And that was back in the early 70s when this happened. Well, yeah, that, was his, that was his loyalty to the group. To the group. That was his loyalty. And right today, I talked to him today before we came on this interview. And right today, he's keeping the legacy alive. 
You know, because you have like a lot of people, they they go into the church and they see some of it, some of this music like secular music. But uh, but R&B is just another form of expression. Like it's like you got good and bad in everything. You got good and bad in all religions. You got good and bad in all school districts. So you just got to take advantage of the beauty of everything that God puts in your, see, God puts people here for a reason. And R&B and jazz and hip hop too, all of this was expressions of people's feelings. And um, and that's why I don't really see this music as secular music. I see it as good love music. Yeah. That's how I see it. And there's good and bad, and like I say, in everything. Well, I've proven that. Even the people that call secular music, they can stop with themselves and even go in their own church and see the good and the bad. Well, I'll tell you this, and, and I think I, I told you this before, uh, when it comes to people talking about that circular music, you know, hey, that circular music, uh, its connotations are evil. Yeah. Like I said, uh, my favorite group, uh, when I had uh, led the uh, choir in New York, uh, my favorite group uh, was then and still is uh, the Williams Brothers. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And if that's you right. play a lot of their music yeah. and you hear it, you will say, wait a minute, that music comes from a song by the Four Tops. Well, that's right. That's correct. Okay. So, yeah, the music comes from the Four Tops. The Williams Brothers have changed the lyrics to it. They've added their own lyrics. But right. one of the things I remember a guy telling me, yeah, my mother is not crazy about, you know, what I write because it's circular music and she doesn't like it. And I said, really? I says, uh, I can prove her wrong. Yeah, me and too. Went, You'd have a heck of a time. And I said, really? So I spoke to her and she's like, no, uh, I, I don't listen to that kind of music. And I said, OK, well, let me do this. I said, I'm going to send you a song that you will call circular music. Right, right, you tell right. me what you think of it, and then I'm going to send you another song. I want you to hear that one too. She said, fine. Automatically, I send her Make Me a Believer by Luther Vandross. Mm. She said to me, it's circular music, but it's nice, okay? It, it's not really right. evil. It, it's nice, but it's circular music. I said, okay, now I want you to listen to the second song, and I want you to tell me what you think of this. So now I sent her the same song. But this time, it's it's by different people. It's by uh, Layla Hathaway. Yes, it's by yes. Kenny Whelan. It's by yes. Kurt Whelan. And they have an audience. And when they start to perform, George Duke is on the keyboards in this thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, right. you listen to it and you watch it. And you, if you heard a pin drop, it would sound like an earthquake and it'd be so loud. That mm. place was so quiet, you couldn't hear nothing other than these artists. When she heard the end of that song, she said to me, I never thought that you could embody religion into circular music. She said, but I tell you the truth, I could sit all day and listen to both those songs, the one by that's Luther right. and the one by Kurt. And that's I right. said, and that's what I'm talking about. Uh, evil, listen, you can put evil lyrics in anything. In anything. Put evil right. lyrics in gospel music if you want them. I you said, it right. all depends on what's in the person's heart. That's right. writing the lyrics. I said, but you can't uh, just call something bad because it's labeled R&B or right. whatever. I said, because it's not. Yeah, I mean, like I love gospel music, R&B. I love all, many genres I love of music. And I can relate to it because it's a form of expression. And God put us on earth for that reason. You know, and that's how I say it, you know. And then the ones that say it's circular or secular music, they have to look at themselves and see how secular they are or could be. And the people that's within the same church or the mosque or whatever. 
you know, because I got friends on all different religions talk the same way. But then when I explained it to them, me and you might have to go on tour explaining this because we do a good job in explaining it. And they start seeing our points. Yeah. And, and it's true. And, and the bottom line is what they don't understand is, and, and I think this is this is one of the things that I really thought was right. funny. You're talking about it's circular music and it's right. evil. Well, certain churches now have hip hop gospel in it. That's right. That's right. Why is there hip hop gospel yeah. in churches? Why? Because there are a lot of youths in churches uh, that feel that uh, the music that's in a church isn't directed toward them. To them. And they're yeah. excluded from it because <laughs> of the way that music that's is. Right. That's so it. now you got churches with hip hop music in it and you got loads of young kids in it. That's correct. That's right. So, mm. you know, that that's the funny thing when people start to label music. I right. mean, I laugh because uh, I can remember uh, CC and BB one. Oh, I love them. Yes, uh, yes. They didn't care for their music because they said the same thing about it. Oh, that's R and B. That's that's not really gospel, you know. Yeah. And I was like, well, you, you have what you need to have. So, mm -hmm. if, if you do it right, you do it. But here's what we're gonna do. It's time for us to let the audience hear. Uh, the music of uh, the Ebony's, which uh, yeah. this song coming up is, is my favorite of this. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to send TC down to the vault mm. to pull that song out. And the song is called, what do you say which one it is, Rob? You're the reason why. There it is, people. So TC, uh, Go find that, and we'll be back shortly. Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go press a few of these buttons, get down into the vault, and bring that song out. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you stay tuned right here on Inside the Music for this single that we're going to play for you by the Ebony's. You're the reason why. Right here on MovingRadio.com.
you the reason why by the original Ebony's, which consisted of Jennifer Holmes Rossi, David Beasley, James Tudor, rest in peace. And I left him out in the intro, and I deeply apologize for that. Clarence Vaughn, went by James. Man, listen, it's just, they don't even make music like that anymore nowadays. It's such a shame. Go ahead, King Don. Take it away. Finish doing y'all thing. Well, people, uh, if you heard what I heard, uh, listen, uh, I know you have to feel the same way about the song that I did. Uh, that song, like I said, is absolutely fabulous. Uh, and to tell you the truth, uh, I'm putting together a CD called The Wedding Book. And if I were to steal music to go into that wedding book, which I already have taken music from some people, including one of my co-hosts by the name of KC, who has a song called I Do, and I've taken that from him. Those That song that you just heard would definitely be part of it, believe me. And you know it's got to be a good song for wedding because you done already heard Mr. Dickerson say, he used them for his. Yes. What better person to pull out a song to play for a wedding than somebody that manages the group that made the song. So be that as it may, uh, it was it's it's that's an iconic song. Like I said, I don't care if you don't remember who the group is, when you start playing their music, if you don't remember who they were or who they are, you don't sure remember who the hell you were dating and where you were. So uh that's the bottom line with that. So Mr. Robert Dickerson. Uh, what else information can you give us? Because we, we, I know for a fact, uh, you've got an event coming up. Yeah, uh, the Ebony's going to be part of that event. Yes, we have the Ebony's, the Philly Intruders, uh, Howl Melbourne is uh, the legendary Blue Notes, Greg Boy's Blue Notes, Howl Mel's and Blue Notes. They awesome, you know, because I've been hiring them for a long time when all the three originals was with Greg Boyd. And Greg kept the legacy of how Melvin's Blue Notes alive. You know, there's a couple groups out there, but we have Greg Boyd's Blue, Legendary Blue Notes. We have John the Boss Man Hall. Uh, he has a lovely group, a powerful group of young ladies and himself. And uh, John Who's Hall. the Boss Man? Who's yeah, John yeah, the Boss Man? Yeah, yeah man, the you Boss can, Man. You, 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 you feel cream. Yeah, you can't trust him. No, why not? He's a good man. And then he, uh, Valerie Ford was good. Because his, his face is right down there at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do see him. Is that is him? Okay. What's yeah, up? That, that's him down there. That's him. Okay. That's yeah, John the Boss Man. He's, he's going to be on the, on the program too. Oh, okay. Yes. And uh, Valerie, all of them, they were all with Philly Cream, another powerful group out of Philadelphia. Yeah, and Valerie's on next. She, she yes. she's gonna be our next artist. Yeah, so you know, this is, I appreciate this program, and I just, I just want to stipulate again the mark of the Ebony's. They're not just not only was they a great group, they are a historical group because they was the first national hit group on the Philadelphia when Kenny Gamble off signed Philadelphia International. There's their first national hit, and that song "You're the Reason Why" was the song. And he came out with a lot of other great songs. And then It's Forever. It's Try. Yeah, yeah that, I'll Try, Determination, yep. Life in the Country, Sexy Way, Do You Like the Way I Love You. Oh, I could go on and on and on. So many great songs by the Ebony's. And I want to thank all the original Ebony's who are still living. Jenny uh, Rossi Holmes. Uh, well, Jenny Holmes Rossi. Uh, Clarence, we call him Jingles Vaughn. And of course, the founder and the creator of the Ebony's, Mr. David Beasy, that's keeping Ebony's legacy alive. And he refuses to give up. And I love him for that spirit that he wants to keep the group's historical accomplishments and legacy alive. Well, yeah. he needs to because they are absolutely black history in music. That's correct. That's correct. Now, we thank you, man. Well, listen. 
uh, we getting ready to get on out of here, but I, I, I want to say this. Uh, they were such an iconic group, uh, and you have so much going on uh, that at any time, uh, you can send me whatever, and I will be glad to list it on my pages for people okay. to see. And here's another thing. Uh, being the manager of them, if somebody wants to get a hold of you to maybe book uh, the Ebony's or anything, uh, where can you be reached? Yeah, my phone number is mobile number. Call, tell them, call me my mobile. is almost 24-7. Area code 856-364-0703. And also, uh, our website is under construction with the Ebony's. But if you want to know a lot about the Ebony, you go to my organizational website, and that's www.unitycommunity.com. That's all one word, Unity Community. Unitycommunity.com. Or well, if you Google my name, it'll take you to that website. And on that website, I have a lot of information of the Ebony's okay. on that website. And our actual original official website of the Ebony's is, uh, uh, you know, under con construction. But that phone number again, area code 856-364-0703. I thank you so much, Don. My brother, I thank you for coming on. I, I, I am so glad that you came on and divulge uh, the information about the Ebony's and how iconic uh, they actually were. Uh, as short a time as they may have been in the public, their yeah. music has never left the public. That's correct. Uh, so the bottom line is I thank you for coming on uh, and giving us the information. Uh, here's another thing. Uh, what would you say to younger artists that want to get in this business? What would be uh, your information as to what they need to do? Well, you know, Kenny Gamble looked at me in my face, right? And he said, Rob, tell you guys, right? Be excellent. Be good. He said, don't chase money. He said, if you're excellent, money will chase you. And when Kenny Gamble told me that in my face, I said, you know what? That was profound. And like a lot of people like, how much we gonna get for this gig? They look at uh, a job as a gig and that's the worst thing to do. Kenny said, be excellent. Put on a good show, be excellent. He said, the money will chase you. And that's one thing I can tell all young people. Be good, work hard. And then you will be somebody great, no matter whatever you do. Well, in closing, what I have to say is simple. Uh, people, uh, you have heard the very iconic, legendary uh, man, uh, Mr. Robert Dickinson, manager of the illustrious Ebony's. Uh, Listen to what he had to say as to younger artists, if you're coming out, what you need to do. My statement is that there are a lot of people wanting to be in this business. If you really want to be in this business, do your homework. You need to find out who these people were that set the table for you to come and sit at and eat. Okay. And you need to find a way of being able to thank them uh, and show them that you are more than humbled for what they've done for you to be able to be in this business. And like a friend of mine, uh, Mr. Kenny Paulson always said when he's on this show, he said, learn the business and take care of business or business will take care of you. So in closing, TC, that's up to you, my brother. Take us out. Thank you, King Don, for that. Um, let me just start by saying, number one, um, Mr. Dickerson, I definitely appreciate you being here on the show to give your knowledge and your insight 
of a group that not a lot of people know about, but a group that is actually extremely instrumental in the fabric foundation for the sound of Philadelphia. Because a lot of people might not understand in that short span of the career of the Ebony's, there was a lot that was done and a lot that they might not have necessarily gotten the proper amount of acknowledgement for. But for that, we say thank you. And we say thank you for persevering through it all, even through the loss of, of, of Mr. Jingles of King Clarence and an opportunity to continue doing what you're doing, even at this time, because not so many people can put out timeless music like you have and still have the ability to perform it for the world, for the world to hear and for the world to be entertained by it, to know that that came out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania the sound of Philadelphia, Philly International, regardless of who might try to say that it was this other group or this other act that made that company and the sound what it is, we know from right here on Inside the Music, if you dig far enough and you read deep enough into what took place, remember, a lot of people see a flower, not everybody sees a seed. So trust and believe there are a lot of seeds out here in this music business, in this entertainment business of people that opened up pathways and roadways for other acts, and artists and companies and people to be successful. And they just might not get all the credit they deserve. But right here on Inside the Music, the truth about the truth. If you send them, we'll move on. That's the model here at Inside the Music, as well as on MovingRadio.com and Moving Radio TV because we want to give you the insight, the upsight, and sometimes the downsight of what we might see in hindsight when people's careers seem to change or evolve or escalate or de-escalate. So we just want you to know that we appreciate groups like the Ebony's who still stand even when History tries to make it seem that they are not as important as they are. And with that being said, I'd like to thank my kings, my counsel on here, King KC cousin, who couldn't be with us this episode. King DC Don DeCosta, thank you for everything that you do. King K9 behind everything that happens right here on Inside the Music. He gives us a platform to do what we do right here on Inside the Music, the truth about the truth. And always remember, Inside the Music, the Truth About the Truth is brought to you by Three Pharaohs Productions, Move em Radio DTV, Move em Radio.com, Source 3 Entertainment, Studio 204-176, and Stormy Weathers Entertainment. And right here all around the world, it's peace and love in the world. And like I always tell you, do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Holla at you, big homie. They always brown. Peace. Oh, wait a minute. Y'all thought it was over. I had a little more business to handle. I want to give a shout out to, you see it, you see the dub, West Philly Speed Boys, West Philadelphia High School, Philadelphia PA, who just recently played for the Philadelphia Public League Basketball Boys Championship. Unfortunately, they got bested by the perennial champ, but this year, they set history. This is the first time that the school has been back in the Philadelphia Public League Championship since 1979. So let me give a big old shout to my West Philadelphia Speed Boys! Right here, your big homie on MoveRadio.com and Radio TV. Holla, you big homie. <laughs> Love y'all.